Peace everyone, I'm Nasgard here and welcome to day 13 of Inktober. Uh, today's, today's prompt is teaming, which I know a few of you were a little confused of, but hopefully I cleared that up for you uh, yesterday. Let's go ahead and look at some of the work that you guys sent me starting off. Uh, so the first one here is from Drawing Art Lab. I often see her in the chats. I've been liking the pieces that you uh, have been sending me, Anastasia. Uh, they're really nice. Here's one from Fine Art Anna. Everyone knows her in the chats. Um, she has been turning out some of the most amazing Inktober pieces. Uh, this is another one from her. This was her Shattered piece, which I really, really liked the uh, concept behind. But uh, yes, that was uh, one that she sent me. Here's one from Sebastian. I believe this is his shattered piece as well. Kind of like a hand broken up by a mirror, I think. So uh, really cool. Here's one from David. David sent me this one. Very cool uh, contrasts. Um, uh, definitely a good, good inking work there. Here's one from Maria. I really like this one, the Pinocchio one for uh, Long, which I thought was uh, so obvious of a choice, but uh, I didn't see any other than that one. Here's hers for, uh, here's uh, Kalia's for Crooked. I really liked uh, this one as well. Oh no, I think I may have messed up the name. I put two, yeah, I, I think I may have messed up the name a little bit. Um, this, this should be Kalia's piece, that's right. Uh, here's hers for, I think, Shattered, or maybe Crooked, I'm not quite sure. I forget. But uh, it looks like an apple that's chopped up into pieces. It's really cool. Here's one from Jeremy, and this is a cell phone that is broken. That's a good one for Shattered. I think that happens a lot. Here's one from Shiny. She did Nugget. Um, really, really liked the expression on Nugget's face here. Um, I think I'm, I, I don't know if I've shared that one. Um, here, Shiny uh, colored my Screech drawing, which I thought was really good. Great coloring job. Uh, here's another one from Shiny, uh, kind of a pin-up piece, and it has Nugget. If you can see that, it's the Nugget crawling up her leg. It's kind of cute. Um, here's one from Linda, and if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a, a run in tights, uh, which I thought was a really good, a really interesting take on, the, on that prompt. Here's one from Brenda. Uh, you can see Nugget hiding up in the tree from the mouse, so it's not eaten. Uh, here's one from John, WD40. He did uh, Forest Gump, which uh, says uh, Run Forest. I thought that was a good one. Um, here's one from Kelly. A really nice skull with kind of ram horns coming off. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely a little bit cooler than the skull I did yesterday. Here's one from Scotty. Uh, you got Nugget there on the right, which I thought was uh, done really nicely. I like the expression. Here's another one from Scotty. I like this idea of doing the, the shattered heart um, and then having it black behind. It has a really nice um, composition to it. And then again, here is another one from Drawing Art Lab, Anastasia. And I think that is it. I had 20 of them, so uh, thank you all for sending me your lovely drawings. Uh, I definitely enjoy sharing them. Hello, Hildy, Silvern, Wendy, uh, Carmen, Christy, uh, Jaira, and Noeticus. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, real quick, I so yesterday, uh, my mind was blown today, okay? So yesterday i ordered some art supplies and uh, i wanted to get a new sketchbook for inktober for inktober next year i'm, I'm going to stick with this one this year but i woke up this morning and like 10 a.m i got uh, somebody uh ringing my doorbell and it was the supplies that i ordered and i was like i was like how is that even possible because I, I had to order the supplies from the uk and um, so this is the new sketchbook, and I'm really excited to uh, try this out. Much thicker paper, really, really nice, smooth, thick, heavyweight paper. Um, this is a Stillman and Burn. Uh, so I will, I'll be testing this out uh, with some ink and stuff, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. 
but I'm hoping to make that next year's sketchbook for Inktober so that I have a little bit of uh, freedom to use my inks. And then also what I got was this right here. And this is a set of colored inks. So I've got, um, I've got orange, I've got green, I've got sienna here, so this is a dark brown. I got yellow, red, and blue, so the primary colors. Um, I'm not gonna be using any of these today, but I'm definitely going to be uh, testing them out tomorrow. I don't quite have tomorrow's prompt plan, so I'm excited to try out these colored inks. And uh, what else? I, I also got a dip pen, but I won't be using that today. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So here's the skull from yesterday. Uh, hello, Nyawich. Hello, Elise and uh, Anna. Welcome to the live stream. So I have today planned out, and like I said, today's prompt is teaming, which is, you know, one that kind of, uh, kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. Um, and uh, so what I am going to be doing here is, as you can, you might be able to see, I don't know how well, um, uh, I don't know how well you'll see my sketch here, but it, it essentially it's just a girl with an umbrella uh, standing here in a dress. And so I'm gonna be doing a scenery behind her and it's just supposed to convey the emotion of like being filled with wonder, I guess. I don't know, that's the expression that I feel when I was thinking about this piece and, and planning it out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get started with it. And uh, for today, I'm going to be using my brush again. Uh, you like the sketch already? Uh, that's great. Uh, hello, Linda. I believe I shared one of your, one of your pieces. Uh, hello, uh, Kazarater, whose name I'm still not sure I'm pronouncing right. Um, real quick, uh, make sure you share the live stream so we can get as many people over here as, as possible. It's Friday, so I think, uh, I think there's a lot less excuses for today. So hopefully we can uh, get, get a, quite a few of you. Uh, in the live stream and just hanging out with us and drawing. Yeah, the the supplies they came so fast. I don't even know what to think. I was when when I answered the door. Uh, I thought it was the electrician because they were supposed to come today to check the um, uh, the power usage and make record of it and they never did come hopefully they don't come during this live stream because i was worried i i streamed earlier today over on patreon and i want to thank i want to thank all my new patrons um quite a few new ones this past week so if you're in the live stream watching thank you for coming over to patreon i really really appreciate that and i hope that you enjoy the tutorials that i provide and learn a lot but uh, yeah, so I was expecting it to be the, the electrician, but super duper early because he's not, he wasn't even supposed to be here till one. Um, but then I answered the door and it was the delivery guy. And um, I was totally caught off guard because um, I didn't even know what he'd be delivering. Because the, the, the thought that it was my art supplies, there was just no, there was just no uh, reason for me to think that they'd come because it was it was like yesterday afternoon that I got the email from Jackson's saying that uh, my my supplies had been dispatched so it was like yesterday afternoon so there was no there was just no way that I would have imagined that he would have been carrying my supplies so I was just uh, totally dumbfounded by his presence at the door But I was super excited to get them, uh, and tomorrow I'm gonna I'm gonna dive right in to the the colored inks there. 
I'm just, I don't know what I have. What is tomorrow's prompt? I think tomorrow's prompt is uh, fierce. If, if my memory serves me correctly, tomorrow's prompt is fierce. And um, I, I don't have it planned. So I, I might be able to incorporate a bit of the a bit of the colored inks in some way or another. So hopefully uh, I'll come up with something. Oh yes, it is Friday the 13th, isn't it? I didn't even realize. My, my days Ever since uh, doing these um, these daily live streams for Inktober, my my days don't uh, don't go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And all I know is that I'm on day thirteen. Uh, what time is it in Poland right now? So it is uh, sixteen hundred right now. So four p.m. So I, I, I'm doing today's live stream a little later, uh, an hour later than normal, um, just because I did a live stream earlier today, just a few hours ago actually, I, I live streamed over on Patreon and uh, worked on a really nice portrait that I've just been having the most fun doing and really look forward to uh, sharing that finished uh, finished piece with everybody once it's finally done you're you're really far behind Mandy well it's a good time to catch up during the live stream you know pull out a piece of paper pull out your pens and just doodle something It's never too late. It's six on your planet. So I'm, I'm giving myself a bit of a challenge here by trying to do all these fine lines with uh, the brush instead. Um, I, I also got... So I, one of the other supplies I got was a dip pen. Um, my nibs are in there, but yeah, so I have one of those now. Uh, haven't, I haven't... I, I tried using it a little bit earlier today. It's not the, the highest quality of... of of pen, um, or of the nibs, I guess I should say. Um, I, I can't, there's not a whole lot of control with them. Uh, I used to use, uh, back in when I was in high school, I actually really got into inking with the, the dip pens, and I used it quite a lot, and I got really good at it, but I had a much better uh, nib set, and I was able to get lines so so fine it was like it was like drawing individual hairs but with the the nibs that I got with the set that I ordered um, it was it was fairly cheap I wasn't expecting anything amazing but uh, not the uh, not the greatest nibs they're kind of wide and uncontrollable I really want to make today's piece not not necessarily special, but I, I, I really want to go the extra mile on today's piece, so you all might be blessed with a, a longer stream uh, today, because I, I really want this one to, to look good. I have some water to actually 
clean my brush with now and um, so I should be able to do a little bit better when it comes to shading since I'd be able to clean my brush out well. As you can see I already put a border around it um, so I won't have to deal with that. And I'll have a bit better border than what I did with yesterday's piece. You're in production of White Christmas and I'm in chorus. Oh, okay, well that's that's cool. So you're a singer, are you? I wouldn't dare sing for anybody. I'm a terrible singer. Hello Ankush. Hello Kim. Did I miss anybody else? Nikki, I don't know if I uh I don't know if I said hello to you. Hello. So uh, what are some of your guys' ideas for today's prompt? Uh, for those of you following the official prompt list, what, what are some things you're working on today? Let me know. Uh, do I ever struggle with shakiness? If so, tips. Um, that, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Yes, this is a lady with an umbrella. That's a good question, Kim. So dealing with the shakiness. So um, a lot of my family, a lot of my family kind of struggles with uh, hypoglycemia and it's like kind of, it's like low blood sugar. And if I don't eat, I, I tend to get pretty shaky, uh, so I always try to stay hydrated. Um, I always try to, um, you know, make sure that uh, I eat good. That's that's an important thing. It's something that a lot of people overlook when it comes to to doing art. Uh, you have to be healthy. Um, uh, you can you can warm your your hands up do some stretches in your fingers and things like that to help with with shakiness get the the blood flowing you can kind of think of it as like doing yoga for your for your hands uh, because if you're if you're not if your hands not loose then you're gonna you're gonna tend to be hesitant in what you're doing um, but another thing that you can do is just make sure that you you have a firm uh, platform that you're working on and you stabilize your hand well. Uh, another thing that you can do is don't squeeze your pencil and uh, brushes and whatever thing, whatever your, whatever instrument you're using to create with, don't squeeze it half to death. Um, keep only a tight enough grip on it that allows you to hold it safely without it you know falling out of your hand um, you know no no reason to squeeze it to death it's not gonna jump out of your hand for no reason um, but uh, a lot of practice a lot of practice is is something that you can you know always help do to help improve your your uh, shakiness good good posture you want to make sure you're you know not slouching when you're drawing or whatever that helps that helps blood flow as well um, let's see what else uh, singer dancer ukulele player oh that's cool Mandy thinking about doing a bunch of jellyfish yeah, that's that's a cool idea. Jellyfish are cool. I've seen a few jellyfish come by uh, on Instagram and stuff.
ant nest. That's a good one, yeah. Kind of the ants pouring out of their nest. Doing a glass overflowing with doodle monsters. <laughs> I like that idea. Hello, Mio. Oh yeah, Jennifer, don't beat yourself up. Never, never beat yourself up. All art, all art is a learning process. Um, no matter how good, no matter how good you think my work is, um, I am 100% uh, still learning, and I make mistakes all the time. And I, I would never get anywhere if I let, if I let those mistakes just ruin art for me. Just make sure that you're having fun with what you're doing. Uh, try to relax, you know, it's it's not a competition. Art, art is not a competition, so there's no reason to, um, you know, uh, get discouraged if you feel like you're not creating uh, the best work in the whole world. Um, it don't, don't be so hard on yourself when you're, when you're making stuff. Just have fun. Um, because you'll never progress, you'll, you'll never progress in art if, uh, if you're not having fun. Because if you're not having fun, you're going to lose patience, and patience is the most important aspect to uh, creating. Just, uh, you know, make something that you're proud of, and don't worry about anything else. Have I ever tried blending with rubbing alcohol instead of uh, odorless mineral spirits? Uh, not colored pencils. No, I, I haven't. Um, with with the odorless mineral spirits, it works exactly the way I want it to. I don't need to get any other results. So um, a few people have said you can blend with um, uh, baby uh, baby oil. I have no reason to buy baby oil. I don't have a baby, and I'm never gonna have one. So um, the the paint thinner works exactly the way I want it to. Uh, so I have no desire to um, experiment with with different types of blending. I mean, if somebody were to come along and uh, and say that, have you ever tried blending your colored pencils with a banana and they show me they show me like these really unique amazing results that you get with a banana then I would try it out but uh, I have yet to come across anything that uh, says look at these amazing results that I get blending with with alcohol that uh, that would entice me to change my current method into something other than what it is so if, if you really want to impress me, uh, try blending with a banana and let me know how that works out. And if it works really well, then I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, I, I just, uh, I, I, I don't do a lot of experimenting because I just have plain work that I have to do. Um, and I, I just use what I know works right now. Oh, hello, John. So at the uh, university, you always, um, you always did warm-ups for sketching, yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right, let me know how that works out. I am I am very intrigued. Anything that involves a banana, I'm immediately intrigued.
I have a lot of um, uh, kind of shading that I'm gonna do on my my woman here holding the umbrella but I'm going to finish just the black kind of outline first and then I'm gonna do the background so I'm going to do the environment and then I'm going to come back and shade because the, the water takes some time to dry and uh, just for the sake of keeping the paper as, as wrinkly free as I can, I'm going to try to uh, do that shading part with the water last. Uh, do you peel the banana the right way or the way everyone else does? Um, you you know that uh, that whole deal about like monkeys they peel the banana this way that's the proper way to peel a banana because a monkey does it. That's that's just that's just Facebook trolling that is responsible for uh, uh, for coming up with that. Convincing, trying to convince people that uh, they don't know how to peel a banana correctly. Yeah, that's uh, that's not actual actual fact. Um, <laughs> there's no there's no evolutionary uh, proper proper way to peel a banana. Uh, I peel a banana uh, a few different ways depending on how I'm eating it. So sometimes I. Uh, sometimes I cut my banana up into small slices, and this is a really weird topic to be talking about. Um, <laughs> I just got to point that out really quick. This is extra weird. Um, but since you got me talking about a gosh darn banana. So, um, yeah, if, I, if I'm cutting it up to put it like in my oatmeal or something, I peel it a totally different way. I peel off one side of it. I don't. I don't like split it like like that. I just literally peel off one side, and then I use a knife to to cut it. I use the peel to protect my fingers when I cut when I cut it with the knife. So that's not even one of the uh, two ways. But uh, as far as opening it up from the bottom, I only do that. I'll only do it that way if uh, if I need to have the banana open and it's obviously not going to work the other direction. But that's that's about it. Yeah, I, I've I've heard, I've I've heard I've come across the videos. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that always gets passed around Facebook that it's easier to peel a banana from the bottom. Um, but from all of my years of experience peeling a banana, I've I I I haven't really yet come to that that same consensus. I mean, occasionally I've 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 peeled a banana from the bottom, but um, I would say for the most part I do not do it that way. I mean, there's a lot of things in my life that I that I like to make easier, but I've never once had the urge, like I've I've never wished, oh man, why does this banana have to be so hard to open? I wish I could find an easier way to open this banana. Yeah, I've, I've I've yet to come across that problem in my life, so I've never um, I've I've never decided consciously. You know what? I'm gonna switch 
to peel in this banana from the bottom because it just makes my life that much easier. <laughs> it's just um, just the way that I, I think, I guess. Have I ever tried pickled cantaloupe? That's Now that's an interesting one. Um, I have not. I really like cantaloupe. Um, and I've recently started pickling. I, I well, I've only pickled pickles, um, so I've only made pickles. But uh, that's yeah, that's an interesting one. I've never heard of that. I'm not a huge pickled anything other than cucumbers. But what's something that I've I've recently liked? Uh, beets, pickled beets. I've actually kind of liked those the last time that I had them. Uh, and when I was a kid, I absolutely despised them. My dad loved them, and I just, I, I thought it was the grossest thing in the whole wide world. Um, but pickled, pickled beets. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet someone has designed the the banana storage box. I, you know, I think I've seen that before, um, but I don't know why you would ever store a banana because once you open it, it's like, there's not much to eat there. It's essentially a, a nature's candy bar. You just, you eat it in one sitting. You guys are you guys are bringing the weird out of me again with this banana conversation. There. There's there's the the woman. I think I'll probably play around with her hair a bit more uh, once this ink dries but I think it's good for now. I, I kind of like it. I'm gonna start down here. Start building in the scene, I guess. Uh, but I'm going to do, I'm gonna do an outline of white all around her. Um, at least up there. I, I, I am right here on, the, on her legs. This is going to require a bit of um, concentration, so if I go silent, you know, discuss amongst yourselves the uh, your favorite ways of opening a banana or strange pickled things you've come across. I have to try it. It actually sweetens it like healthy candy. Huh. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna have to try that. Yes, Scott, you are in. Uh, you are definitely in the live chat, uh, Scott. I, I I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I shared a couple of your pieces that you sent me over on Facebook. Uh, speaking of which, I forgot to remind everybody that. Uh, you know, once you finish, once you finish finish a couple of your Inktober pieces, uh, make sure to send them to me over on Facebook. I have that link in the description. Just message them to me and I will share them in the next live stream. Uh, I shared 20 of them today, so I'm hoping that uh, you guys send me enough that I can continue uh, to share some more tomorrow. Uh, if I have anything less than 10, uh, I just don't see the reason to do it. So if I can get more than 10 of your drawings, I will uh, share them. But I, I don't really like to share, you know, 10 drawings of a single person. So uh, three, three at the most, I think, is what, I, what I'll do. Uh, 
how long have I been arting for? Uh, so I've been a professional artist for one year. Uh, I I decided to uh, I decided to uh, try my best to be a professional artist uh, September of last year, and instead of instead of becoming uh, instead of becoming a high school math teacher. So uh, many of you know that I have my de my degree in math, and uh, that was my original plan was to be a high school math teacher. And I would probably be a high school math teacher right now if it weren't for the fact that I met my wife and decided to um, decided to take a year off school uh, and move to Poland. So uh, if it weren't for her, I would most likely be teaching math right now, and you guys would not be. Uh, you know, watching me do this, uh, you most likely would not be supporting me on Patreon. You most likely would, uh, you know, not be able to see all the videos that I've created the past year on my YouTube channel. So you can you can thank my wife for for keeping me here in Poland and supporting me while I attempt to make. Uh, my living as a full-time artist. I'm trying to keep up with the chat. You guys are really, really, um, you guys are really chatting it up today. It's hard for me to keep keep track of all the things. Um, yes, uh, just like Anna said, I should make you a moderator. Yes, Ankush, uh, I have, uh, I I have. I have a degree in mathematics. I I'm I, I love I love math. One of my favorite subjects for sure. Uh, I got my degree from the University of Washington in Washington State. A lot of people associate, um, you know, uh, being mathematically inclined as being uh, not very artistic, but I, I actually find that to be the complete opposite. I, I find that people that uh, are, are mathematically inclined actually tend to be the most interestingly artistic people. You got engineers and architects. Mathematicians. Mathematicians are probably the most uh, artistic people that I've ever met. The way the way that their mind works, um, you know, a lot of people don't know how deep uh, numbers go in in the universe, and uh, the solution to some of the most eloquent math problems are are, are the really the most creative things. I've, I've ever experienced in my life studying uh, studying numbers and mathematics has has really uh, been a fun experience a, a difficult one but fun nonetheless um, Yes, well, uh, you can actually look up Mrs. Unmaskard on, on YouTube here. Uh, she has her own channel. Uh, she, hasn't up she hasn't uploaded any videos. We, we've, we've kind of had a plan of, of using her channel to upload some kind of vlog type, type stuff. Uh, but she's also an artist. Um, I, met, I, I met her and she was making jewelry, but she, uh, yeah, she hasn't had a lot of time to do that. All the earrings that she wears um, when we go out or whatever are earrings that she made. She has a box of them over there, just a bunch, all different colors and things and uh, styles depending on her outfit. Uh, but they're really nice looking. You have a lovely collection of useless degrees. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you're uh, Kim. You're also in Washington. That's cool. Yeah, I, I spent about uh, I, I spent about a decade in Washington as I was stationed there when I was in the military. So I'm I'm fairly familiar with Washington. Uh, I didn't explore a lot, um, but uh, you know I lived in Seattle for a little bit. I lived up in Everett for most of the time. Marysville. Uh, I've traveled, uh, you know, up to Canada a couple times as well. I, I, I we lived over in Bremerton also for quite some time, for about a year. Yeah, I was, you know, every time I am making food, I think about, you know, just trying to make a video of it. Because I would really like to share some of my recipes with everyone. You know, I, I don't talk about being vegan all that much. And it's not like I, you know, try to hammer it into your heads um, to, to make that choice. But uh, if I could share some recipes with you, then, you know, maybe I could encourage a few more of you to, uh, to give up the animal products. Do I have any fans of macaroni and cheese? Because I can give you my macaroni and cheese recipe um, that I make out of cashews and roasted red bell pepper. And it's, it's essentially the best macaroni and cheese you could ever have. All right. I need that to dry a bit. Um, check out a math girl called Viheart. Yes, I, I've, I'm familiar with Viheart. Her, her doodles and math and stuff like that. She's really weird. Like, she's weirder than I am weird. So, yeah, she kind of, she's, she's extra strange. Um, you have a dual degree in anthropology and archaeology. That's, that's, that's cool. And creative writing. That's really cool. That is, yeah, you, you definitely have a, a library of degrees there. Yeah, we went from banana to college degrees. <laughs> making a super... Making a, uh, oh, making vegan supper tonight. Spicy chickpea tacos. That sounds delicious. Uh, yesterday, Anna and I made uh, fajitas. Vegan fajitas, which is just, you know, a bunch of veggies. Uh, we use um, you know, garlic, onions... A few, few sweet bell peppers, um, and then corn, and uh, what else? Uh, zucchini. Use that. Uh, and mushrooms, of course. Got to have mushrooms. Can't have fajitas without mushrooms. That's not fajitas at all. And I make my own tortillas. So I, I, yeah, I make my own fresh tortillas. Every time I make fajitas, I make uh, the, the freshest tortillas. Very good. I, I kind of perfected the recipe yesterday. Because I've been, I've been struggling with the, the flour a little bit as far as the tortillas having a floury taste and I realized that you can get rid of the flour taste of your, your tortillas if you wipe off the excess flour either using uh, water or oil before you fry them and just making sure that your, your pan doesn't have any excess flour on it. Yeah. Gosh, you guys are tagging me like crazy. <laughs> I, now, now I can't keep up with the chat um, because there's so many tags. I don't know where I left off. 
Uh, yes, I make I make cheese out of nutritional yeast. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I do. Yeah, nutritional yeast, cashews, and roasted red bell pepper. That's how I make. That's essentially the ingredients to my uh, my liquid uh, my liquid cheese that I use for macaroni and cheese. And it is. Uh, it is just super good. I also use a bit of garlic and uh, paprika, spicy paprika, uh, to you know, give it a little bite, salt and pepper as well. Anna makes Anna makes um, Kluski and um, uh, she makes these rizals that are just so good. She uses what does she use? Um, lima beans. Lima beans are absolutely disgusting in my opinion, but she she uses lima beans to make these rizals that are just uh, super good. I love it when she makes them. Uh, what else? What else? I, I make uh, my own veggie burgers out of uh, kidney beans. Uh, kidney beans, garlic, and onion. All right, I think this is dry down here. And get rid of some of the ink in this brush and move on to the scenery a little bit using my white gel pen. Um, you don't. I don't want you to be a moderator because you'll ruin everything. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that. I honestly, I don't even know how to make. Um, I don't even know how to make anybody a moderator in the chat. Oh, yeah, I'm making myself hungry with all this talk. We went from bananas to degrees, and now we're just talking about a bunch of food. Yeah, we're just, everybody's gonna leave the live stream because you're um, talking about all this tasty food. Myself, in, myself included. All right, here's my white gel pen. And uh, the the scene that I'm making here is is you know buildings and whatnot. So. I'm going to add a whole bunch of this stuff down here. Let me zoom in for you guys. Uh, I'm essentially just scribbling and then adding dots. So Few, a few subtle outlines of the tops of buildings and then some windows this is, is what I'm uh, trying to to uh, replicate down here and it, it doesn't take it doesn't take a, a lot of effort to to kind of create this type of scenery. Uh, be honest, are they super good or is the wife factor? <laughs> no, I can assure you that I have um, I have no trouble telling my wife that she makes something gross. Uh, for instance, she makes this parsley soup that is just the, the grossest thing in the world and I, I have no problem telling her that. Um, my wife and I, see, uh, a few of you I'm sure know the story. So, I was going. I was going to. I was in university uh, just a couple years ago, living in Washington, and I met. I met my wife online, and for the first two years of our relationship, you know, we were strictly online, and we were together for like a year, a little over a year before we ever met for the first time in person, and uh, 
So our only form of uh, our only form of intimacy was just conversation. So we always we always maintained a very strict uh, level of of truthfulness uh, in in our communication that has has not faded even a little bit. We have zero problems uh, being completely honest and even. I guess you could say uh, brutally honest in some occasions, but uh, never really that, really that bad or anything, uh, as far as uh, brutal honesty. But yeah, so no, no factor at all that she makes the results uh, because they are really good. Uh, it's very easy to set up moderators. Oh, okay. I, I trust you. I believe you. Hello, Andrella. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that somewhat correctly. What I need is a group. Um, yeah, I, I'm really, really thinking about setting up a Facebook group. I will certainly let you guys know uh, if I do that. Yeah, I... I, a few of you had mentioned, you know, like a week ago or something like that, that that I should that I should set up my own Facebook group, and um, I I almost did it. I almost did it, but I I, I didn't quite figure out what the rules were going to be, because if I set up a Facebook group, I, I want the rules to be very clear. I, I don't want any like harassers or you know people that are going to cause drama um, it has to be a hundred percent drama free because I live a life of complete drama free um, so yeah the, the group would have to be drama free as well all right so there's my little uh, city scenery going on here I might I might add to it or something like that I you can you know you can always take away from it as well by just going over the white with black but now I need to do the sky. And that is going to require quite a bit of ink. Now to, to, to separate the sky from the ground down here, I'm gonna just create this line here. Uh, and now I have to fade that in, but I'm not gonna do that until I start incorporating water into my ink. So it's going to be a little while. And I'm going to outline my girl here. Really thin white gap. Uh, I've You've been married to my second husband for two years. Uh, we need to practice what we call rigorous honesty it's the most amazing relationship I ever had yes um, the the level of honesty and trust that my wife and I have uh, was was very quickly established uh, through our communication um, you know we, we've we've essentially had every conversation uh, two humans could possibly have uh, clocking in tens of thousands of hours via Skype with each other and it has definitely been the most uh, um, what's the satisfying relationship that I've I've been able to have with another human being simply because of our our clear level of honesty and communication so yeah you know sometimes if you're ever in a relationship I, I guess I, I I guess now we're switching to relationship advice um, if you're ever in a relationship where you feel like you are afraid to tell the other person the truth you need to 100% tell that other person the truth and if they don't respond in a positive manner in the sense that the uh, you know they don't you know, go crazy. Um, 
then I, you're pretty you're probably in a, in a pretty decent relationship but you need to um, learn to uh, put your confidence in the other person trust the trust the other person's emotional strength uh, to tell them you know what you really think in any given moment I mean there's there's also a huge difference between telling the truth and just you know being mean while also telling the truth Oh hello uh Yuris hopefully I pronounced that somewhat close uh thank you for subscribing I'm I'm glad to see you here and just like Ankush said, welcome, welcome to the family. I think that's what I should probably start referring to all of you as, as family. You guys are uh, so awesome. I, I love, I love hanging out with you guys and just chatting about some of the most random stuff in the world. Uh, yes, I hope I hope that you catch a few more of these streams as well. I'll be doing them for the rest of the month for sure. And uh, I, I forget who it was, uh, but they they said they commented on yesterday's and said that uh, they're they're gonna miss the daily streams once Inktober is done. And uh, you know I I I will also miss them a little bit. Um, I don't think I will miss them so much that I, I will commit myself to streaming every single day for the rest of my life, but uh, I'm certainly considering, you know, maybe adding one more stream to the week or something like that. Uh, you know, there are a few times I've done the, uh, the live streaming tutorial for pastels over here on YouTube. Um, so I, I might just I might just do another one, uh, you know, maybe once a month or something along those lines. But for those of you that really really enjoy the streams, I do um, I do an extra stream over on Patreon every week. So at the very least, you could jump over, support me on Patreon, and hopefully I can continue to stream. Uh, a lot farther into the future than what I currently uh, am able to. Oh, you'll be, you'll be the uncle I always looked up to. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe do a colored pencil one a week and a pastel once a week. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I, I, I consider that. I mean, I like to keep my, my colored pencil ones uh, a little bit more geared towards the Patreon side because, you know, uh, every week I'm, I'm basically doing a, a colored pencil tutorial every week. Sometimes, you know, I, I switch to pastels. Uh, currently this month, though, over on Patreon, I, I am doing... I am working on a really, really lovely portrait that uh, that I, I can't stop staring at, especially now that uh, today I, I finished the eyes. So a few of you that um, follow me on Instagram or Facebook uh, most likely saw the picture of the portrait that I'm working on, and uh, I am just absolutely in love with it. I, I love it to death. Which is always a great feeling when you feel that way about your own work, because I know, uh, I know we all as artists uh, are oftentimes our own worst critic, 
but there's always that there's always that one piece that you just you do and you love and I think that this piece this colored pencil piece that I've been working on for a few weeks now is is definitely one of my uh, all-time favorites thus far Yeah, I do. I do uh, photography a little bit. Um, however, I I sold my photography camera uh, for my my Canon 70D, which is I feel like is much more geared towards uh, film rather than photography itself. I mean, it is still a DSLR camera, but uh, I I really only have uh, lenses that I use for filming. Um, I, I had a Nikon, uh, what was it, a, a Nikon D750 or something like that, um, and I had a pretty good collection of lenses that I got specifically for photography, um, but uh, the Nikon didn't have very good video as far as uh, the autofocus, which made recording videos uh, very difficult for me. And so I switched to the, the Canon 70D, and that's what I use for all my, my videos now. Um, but it doesn't have a self-timer. Uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the features that I really, really liked in the, the Nikon camera. I just felt like the, the Nikon camera was geared more towards photography than my Canon camera is. Oh goodness, this uh, sky is going to take uh, some level of dedication to really fill out here. So hopefully Hopefully at this stage of the, uh, the drawing process, you guys don't get too bored with uh, basically seeing nothing happening here. But it will pay off in the end once I have a really nice dark sky. And start adding in some stars and stuff. Getting a little sloppy with my brush my outline and I have to use my white pen to fix a few spots like right here for instance there we go just like new uh, hello Brenda Yeah, I would say that uh, watching watching people draw with uh, colored pencils or, or color with colored pencils uh, helped me develop my my own techniques that I now share. Um, one one portrait artist in particular that I've I've I watched quite a lot early on uh, to. To establish my techniques for uh, doing portraits Sorry, this this part of the hair takes 
uh, a bit bit extra concentration. Of course, I could I could really just do all this and with the white gel pen, but why why do that? I'm going to use the the gel pen anyway to do some of the final details of the hair aside from the outline here uh, worry not the chat keeps you entertained that is fantastic yeah that's that's why I um, that's why I really like uh, having the live streams uh, with all these lovely people that that come by. Um, I think, I think, from from my own experience, I think that I have probably the the most friendly individuals in my live stream. Uh, I haven't watched a lot of live streams. But uh, I tell you what, I think that uh, the people that I have that come over and watch them are probably the, the best people to have in a live stream. They're so interactive, so friendly. I love it. I love the community that uh, we've, we've built together around my channel. I can't say that I've built it because it wouldn't be a community without uh, all of you great people. So. You have to. I have to give you, you all credit for helping me develop um, the atmosphere around my channel. I always said during the uh, the drawing journals that I, I always looked forward to Mondays because I get to hang out with such such great people. Um, but now for Inktober, I get to hang out with you guys every day. I mean, it's a bit stressful because I have to come up with a drawing every day, which is uh, uh, quite time consuming, but I've been having fun for sure. Yes, united globally through art. That is totally right. Absolutely. Because we, we really are a, a global community. Have people from every corner of the world. It's such a great feeling. I mean, how many teachers... How many, how many teachers teaching high school math can say that all of their students at any given point is, is, is you know... Uh, attending class from every corner of the world. Yeah, I, I doubt too many can say that. And you guys come to class voluntarily. I don't even have to... I don't even have to, to force you to come to class. You just do it because you enjoy it so much. I'll be sure to put that on my resume uh, if I ever have to get uh, a teaching job. I'll be like, yeah, the, my last teaching job was teaching uh, people all around the world how to be creative and have fun and color and draw and paint. Alright, we can, we can kind of see uh, the finish line of, of filling this in with black. Oh, goodness. I, I tried to make the, uh, I tried to make the space, the frame here, 
as as small as I reasonably could as far as not destroying the overall composition of the piece because I, I didn't want to make it too small because if I did that then it would it would mess with the composition especially this section right here like I, I need I needed to frame her a little bit better so yeah I I, I guess I I need to fill in a, a bit more extra just negative space because of that. What time is it in Italy? Um, it should be an hour behind me, so it should be like 1600 there, so 4 p.m. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Italy is an hour behind me. It's pretty far west of here. So now you guys are uh, finding out where everybody's from, huh? You have to let me know how many countries are represented in this live stream. I think we, we usually have about 10, I would say, minimum 10, 10 different countries at any given moment. Gosh, I feel like this ink, as soon as I put it on the paper, it's dry. Can't get it to spread around. Come on, ink. Move. By the time I'm done with this piece, I'm not even going to have enough to, to go on. I think I'm going to try to finish off this side. Let me just block it in. So I'll go here. And I'll do this section right here. Just like that. Uh, you got more than ten, I guess. Yeah, probably. I, I would be surprised if it was uh, if it was only ten. Um, honestly, I would be I would be uh, I'd be surprised if it was like less than thirteen different countries right now. Because a, a lot of I know a lot of people are uh, located in Europe, and you know it's really easy. It's really easy to get a lot of different countries with uh, European fan base, UK, France, Germany, Netherlands, Denmark. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see this picture starting to come together. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to create a bit of rain as well. There's going to be some rain in this picture, which is why I'm trying to keep all of my brush strokes um, with my my brush uh, vertical because that just reinforces the effect of rain. 
because the the ink is not exactly um, a very consistent coverage right now. I'm getting a, a, a few a few lighter gray gray areas. So by keeping it all vertical, it helps create that uh, that rain. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm just going to assume you're talking about me. <laughs> I can't wait to just get to the shading part. This is taking too long. I wish there was just a, a way to fill it up. Just drop some ink and it just spreads out but stays where I want it. Almost done. Almost done. I'm going to finish off this section right here. Hopefully, uh, not too many of you are getting getting bored of me coloring in this this background here. Even I'm struggling a little bit, so. Oh, you you like the um, the little webcam that that shows me. Uh, I'm glad. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Yes, I, I like to be I like to be engaged with with the community around my channel. I try to I try to respond to everyone's comments on my videos. Um, you can you can ask just about anybody that's ever messaged me on on Facebook. I, I always try to respond in a, a reasonable amount of time. Um, I'm happy to give give feedback, you know, if you ever were looking for, uh, you know, some tips on something or you're working on a project. I have uh, quite a few people, you know, send me pictures of a project they're working on and just ask me for some direction. I always try to respond. Try to be as helpful as I can to everyone. I mean, when... Uh, when I got out of the military and I started college and I got into uh, oil painting, you know, it, one of the, the best things uh, was that I was able to stay in the, the uh, studio room. And the, the studio room was filled with basically all the people that were getting their degree in some form of art or another, whether it was printing or studio art um, or, or something like that and we all had kind of our own spot in the studio and um, just a, a bunch of great people that that regularly showed up to to work on their own original pieces um, and it was it was a really great uh, place to create it was really friendly um, and I, I, I kind of I guess I model my um, the environment that I want to model is something like that you know where 
anybody can uh, come and, and create stuff and ask me questions, get, get my best input. I mean, I'm not the greatest artist in the world or anything like that. Um, I certainly don't pretend to be. I still have a lot of learning to do. I, I try to experiment with, with new mediums and I try to give everybody the best information that I can uh, just based on my my own experience. And I have absolutely no problem whatsoever saying I don't know. Um, you know, when somebody asks me a question about a technique or a medium or something and I, I, just, I just don't know, um, I have no problem saying that. I try to stay as humble as I can because I know that I'm not the most magnificent artist. But I just I just do my best and I, I hope that uh, at the very least I, I encourage more people to, to create without uh, any reservation or being self-conscious or anything like that. Okay, Mandy, I will, um, you know, when you, when you send me some pieces, uh, you know, just let me know what kind of feedback you want. I'm happy to, to, uh, give you a, I can, I can give you, uh, you know, a few different types of feedback. I, if you send me your work, I'm not immediately going to go into uh, teacher mode and be like, you need to fix this. You need to fix this. This is, uh, uh off here. Uh, that's that's not how I'm going to respond right away. I would I would need you to ask me uh, to respond that way uh, for me to do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to say that's that's really nice. You know, um, I like what you did here. I'm just going to give you you know the positive comments. But if you if you want a critique in the sense that you know you want to get better, feel free to ask me. Um, I will be truthful without being rude. Uh, who is my favorite artist? My favorite artist? Oh gosh, Kim. What a, what a hard question. Huh. My favorite artist. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can have one. You know, I don't know if I can really say, like, who is my favorite musician. Because they all, they're all unique. And they, ins they all inspire me in different ways. Whether it's the, the, the paintings they do, or the pastel pieces they do, or the portraits they do. You know, so I have a really hard time... Um, Deciding. I know that's kind of a, a cop-out answer, but I, I guess I, I guess I don't want to play favorites when it comes to, to my, to a to a favorite artist or something. Yeah, no, no different than I don't want to play favorites with my favorite musician, um, because really, what would favoriting be? Um, you know, maybe just like uh, musicians, you know, sometimes I really like their music, they're great, and then, you know, they put out a new record, and I'm not a fan of it, I don't like it. Um, do I stop calling them my favorite musician? So, the same thing with artists, maybe they paint something, and I'm like, wow, that is just amazing, I absolutely love it, they're my favorite artist. And then the next thing they paint, I'm like, meh, I don't really like it that much. Do they stop being my favorite artist? So I, I guess I guess it's just best for me to, to say that I don't have any any such thing as a favorite uh, because just like my appetite, it it changes and evolves over time. So um, yeah, I, that that's gonna have to be my my cop out answer. In 13 days, I've learned more 
from you than I have the last decade. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mandy. That's, that's good, I'm glad. Uh, a teacher who can speak at students' level is far more successful than the best in the business. Yes, and that is one thing that I try, I try my best to do. Um, I try to avoid any like weird technical uh, language. That way, um, anybody that's watching like a tutorial or something like that is able to understand what I mean. So I, I'm glad that I can. I'm glad that I can articulate my thought process and my technique well enough that even the beginners are able to follow and understand. Yeah, indeed, Wendy. Yeah, I thought you were the the hard questions one. Yeah, the the black does make it uh, make it pop off the page quite a bit. Now I need to go in with some grays here. And I'm hoping that I can get the effect that I want. Uh, this is going to be kind of difficult, I think. But I'm getting a much better gray here than I was yesterday since I'm able to clean my brush. Since I... I, I uh, mistakenly did not have water or a paper towel so I have water to clean my brush and everything and uh, the water is really making the paper ripply and it's gonna be like that uh, until it fully dries unfortunately so uh, bear with me here try to finish this uh, sky with as little water as possible. This is where watercolor paper would be really, really nice because I would love to just uh, put some water down and kind of drip in the, the ink to make it kind of spread out and create a nice pretty texture. I'm gonna. I, I'm trying to create a nice gradient from the the black up here down into the rest of the sky. I'm still new to this. I've never used watercolors or anything, uh, so I'm still kind of still kind of learning this a little bit. Uh, do I always finish work I start? I have a lot of half done work uh, that I don't go back and finish. Um, that's a good question. I actually only have, well, technically I have two now. Um, there's this, this oil painting that I started about six years ago. Um, and it's really big. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like one meter by like one and a half meters or something like that. Uh, so it's really large oil painting, and I um, I ended up moving, so I was unable to finish it, um, and I never had the room to finish it, and now it's just stored back in Ohio with my sister's stuff. So um, in all likelihood, it will never, ever, ever be complete. Uh, it will always be an incomplete painting. Um, so I, I don't have the option there as far as, you know, getting back to it. But the other incomplete piece that I, I call it incomplete, but really, you know, you, it's questionable as to whether or not it's 
technically considered an incomplete piece because um, it's just a, a bare a bare drawing in colored pencil and I really just don't like it and that's why I call it incomplete but technically it could be uh, it could be considered complete uh, it's just that I don't like it so that's partially why I, I could maybe refer to it as an incomplete piece Alright, so as you can see, I'm starting my shading process. And has anybody fallen asleep when using colored pencils? Um, no, no, I, I certainly haven't. I don't I don't imagine that I would be able to fall asleep while while sitting at my desk drawing uh, really ever Gosh, it would be so nice to just take a bunch of water to this dress and just create like kind of a just drip ink on it and create kind of like a, a splattery water type thing I would love to do that but this paper just won't handle it uh, can I recommend any books on learning shading you know shading is one of those topics that uh, I, I get asked about uh, fairly often and uh, a, a really recent too. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about shading stuff and personally I don't have uh, any recommendations as far as books. I, I don't, uh, I've never been a, a person that was able to learn from reading books. Um, all of the skills that I've kind of developed for the most part have just come simply from uh, constant repetition. Um, but I would say if you, if you wanted if you wanted a, a, a project that I recommend trying, um, if you already know perspective, if you if you know perspective then great. Um, if you don't then uh, you don't have to you can try something to color something else. But what I would recommend, uh, if you want to practice just shading, uh, no references are needed or anything like that, grab a ruler, uh, get a piece of paper, do a two-point perspective, set up, set up your horizon line and your, and your vanishing points, and uh, draw a maze. Draw a three-dimensional maze. And once you're done drawing your three-dimensional maze, simply shade it. Uh, shade one side of the wall, the same exact shade uh, that that you know what you can get. Whether you're painting, whether you're uh, using a graphite or anything like that, just shade that one side of the wall. So 
um, on, on throughout the entire maze. And then choose another side of the walls, uh, say it will be like the left facing side of all the walls, and shade it really dark. Shade the tops of all your maze um, a single shade, but vary, vary the, uh, the values. Uh, this technique was, this, this project is actually something that I did way, way, way back uh, when I was in middle school. And I still remember it. And I just, I remembering, I remember it having such a profound realization on, on shading. And as far as trying to establish like a light source and uh, just uh, matching that light source on every part of the, the maze just kind of gave me an epiphany as far as shading goes, but um, the the reality is I learned to do shading uh, simply by a lot of repetition because when I was younger, I would say uh, maybe 11, 12 is when I really, really started practicing shading. Um, and what I would do is I would just take my notebook and I would draw any everyday object. So uh, sometimes it'd just be a bench or a flower or something, anything. And I would shade it. I wouldn't use any references or anything like that. I would just uh, try to get as many values as I could uh, with my pencil and shade it in any manner in which I you know, felt like doing. And I would try to figure out what the cast shadow is supposed to be doing. I would try to figure out, um, you know, if it was a rounded object, I would try to figure out the best that I could, just in my imagination, how uh, it should look. But I, I don't have any uh, knowledge of, of books uh, for that particular subject. Um, really the only book that I am currently aware of as far as an art book goes, is the uh, colored pencil portrait painting with colored pencils by uh, Aliona Nicholson. Um, and that's just because she sent the book to me for free. So, yeah, I, I, can't, uh, I can't do a lot there for you. But hopefully you find something that's helpful because a lot of people have been a lot of people have been asking me about shading techniques, and uh, I wish that I could help out more. I, I I don't I don't think about it enough. I guess it's just one of those techniques for me that, you know, I I follow a reference photo if I'm, you know, doing a project that I have a reference photo for. Um, but uh, for the most part, I I do a lot of guessing. I do a lot of guessing for shading. good um, oh you know what the top of her umbrella here needs to be black kind of um, I want to do like designs so I'm just gonna scribble some stuff back and forth literally scribbling. Uh, why don't I do a series on shading? You know, I've, uh, I've, I've kind of been thinking of doing that for a really long time because even my wife wants to do, wants me to do a, a tutorial series on shading. Uh, the only problem that I have, and this is more of a, a personal problem, 
is that I can't think of what to do. Um, I've, I've given it a lot of thought uh, over a really long time, and the thing that I struggle with the most is that I cannot figure out for the life of me how to do it. Like, how do I do a uh, comprehensive tutorial on shading uh, that will explain, you know, my thought process because, um, yeah, I, oh goodness, I, I have such little thought process when it comes to shading. I, I, I'm not really thinking a whole, a whole lot about um, my, my shading technique, I guess, uh, if you want to call it that. And I, I guess I haven't really put a lot of thought into it recently, but when my wife asked me, we were still dating at the time, and um, I hadn't even moved to Poland, so that's, that's kind of how long I've been uh, playing around with the idea of doing such a tutorial. So if you guys have any ideas as to how you would like to see me approach shading or maybe give me some insight onto what what aspect of, of shading is it that, that kind of throws you off? Because, um, like I said, I've been doing it for so long that it actually, it actually is really hard for me to even think about what what it was that I struggled with in the beginning. Yeah, that's, I kind of agree with you on that, Kim. It, it kind of just comes down to practicing. Um, but what, what is it to, what is it to practice uh, shading that would help you kind of, uh, get better at it quicker. I don't really have an answer to that because I can't really think of something specific that would help uh, all that much. Um, I think a, a, one of the things that I think a lot of people struggle with the most is that they're afraid to go too dark and they always go too light. And I would say that's probably the biggest problem that people have unknowingly. All right, I think this is I think this is dry, which is great because I need it to be dry for what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to take my ruler. I think uh, your biggest struggle with shading is remembering where the light source is and then night-day differences. Uh, you have a ton of ideas for this shading thing. Let me know if you want some ideas thrown your way. Sure, Wendy, uh, go ahead. You can, you can message me on Facebook uh, any of the ideas that you might have because, yeah, to be completely honest, I'm, I'm at a little bit of a loss when it comes to the, the shading um, topic. Not because I don't know how to shade, but just because I don't know where to I don't know where to begin with the the tutorial, like what what to do for a, for a tutorial.
So I'm, I'm creating uh, the rain kind of uh, reflecting or bouncing off of her. Like that's that's what I'm doing now. And then some of the kind of blurrier rain happening here. Like that. Uh, maybe I should just do a series on this as well. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, definitely uh, jump on, jump on the the uh, tutorial bandwagon and and go crazy. Uh, if you if you have some ideas, you know, uh, do it by all means. All right, let's create some stars now, so we we have a little bit of atmosphere in the back. This is all I really wanted to create for this scene. Some rain, nice contrast. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, like the, uh, the finished product here. Uh, I'm just gonna add some stars. Looks amazing, okay, well thank you Anna. I'm glad you like it. I wanted, like I said, I was trying to create an atmosphere that uh, kind of represented uh, the sense of wonder, and I, I just, I just liked this outdoor scene with this this girl kind of like looking up at the night sky. So that's that's what I was going for. So I hope you guys like it. Once I finish the a bit of stars here, I think it will come together a bit nicer. And finish it off. Add that last bit of a detail that it needs to just look good. Oh, thank you, Manda. Uh, Mandy, I'm glad you like it. Oh, thank you, Carmen. I, I, I'm glad that you like it. Yeah, I thought this one was probably going to turn out to be one of my favorites as well. Um, I really liked the idea here uh, before I even sketched it out. And uh, it's turning into something more than what I thought it was going to. I, 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 yeah, I really like the way that it, it, it came out. And at the very least, yeah, the little raindrops, you know, uh, bouncing off of her as far as like putting some ink there and then wiping it with your finger. That is definitely a, a new technique that uh, you have under your belt now. And I think maybe I'll try to do the moon maybe here. That's just going to be a small moon. It's more or less just my fingerprint. I thought I was going to have to use acrylic paint, but this this pen worked so well with that skull yesterday. I was like, yes, perfect. It just it's so vibrant, so vibrantly white works really really nicely I think. I would like to create some thinner lines but I can't really I can't really get the the lines to be any thinner with the pen. Yeah so I, I'm just gonna leave the rain like that. I don't think there's any reason to to go overboard with the, the details there but anyways um, I, I think I've been streaming for quite some time, a little, a little uh, 
a little longer than I anticipated. But I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the, the picture, enjoyed the process. I certainly enjoyed the conversation, though. So uh, thank you guys really so much. Uh, there's the finished product. There's the finished look for you guys. I'll, I'll have a picture over on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, so make sure you uh, give me a follow. I have the links for that in the description. And uh, make sure you message me your drawings as well so that I can share them on tomorrow's live stream. I'm not sure what time I am going to have tomorrow's stream, so uh, you know, just uh, be a little flexible. I'll, I'll definitely post that in the next couple hours or so. So uh, go over to my home page on my channel and you'll see, um, you'll see the scheduled stream for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, I, I forget, uh, tomorrow I think is fierce, so I need to figure something out uh, quickly for that. Um, I thought about doing uh, just a picture of, uh, of Nugget real angry or something like that. But anyways, uh, thank you all so much again. Uh, I hope that you have a lovely day. And uh, it's the weekend now, so hopefully you guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Peace.